brutal killing of Margaret Pole, Countess of Salisbury, in 1541 is a remarkable story. It gets a bit gory, though, just a warning. I mean, hers is one of the most gory of all the execution stories, and there were a lot of those coming from the Tower of London in its thousand-year history. Margaret Pole was a well-connected Tudor lady of high rank in society. She was the daughter of George Plantagenet, the Duke of Clarence. His name might be familiar, as he has his own incredible death story. He was the brother of Edward IV and Richard III. That made Margaret cousin to the princes in the Tower. And Clarence was rumoured to have been executed by drowning in a butt of Malmsey wine. It's even been said that's exactly what he asked for. Margaret was only ten years old when both her parents were gone. Her mother had died when she was young, and her father, convinced it was poison, executed two servants for her murder. So there were lots of family connections. Margaret's cousin was Elizabeth of York, who was to marry Henry VII, and Margaret herself married Henry's cousin, the Tudor, Richard Pole. Margaret became lady-in-waiting to Catherine of Aragon when she married Henry VII's son and heir, Arthur. But Arthur died as a teenager and Margaret was left without a role. She was widowed with five children and had no income of her own. Fortunes changed for her family when Henry VIII, younger brother to the late Arthur, making him the new heir, married Catherine of Aragon himself. Margaret was recalled and became lady-in-waiting to the Queen. In favour, once again, she was given back lands and she became the Countess of Salisbury. She became governess to Catherine of Aragon's daughter, Mary, one day to become queen herself. Margaret stuck by Mary, even after Henry had moved on from her mother to Anne Boleyn and moved away from the Catholic Church. Problems were brewing. Margaret's children had become influential in their own right. Her son, Reginald, was educated by the church and had moved up through the ranks. He became the last Roman Catholic Archbishop of Canterbury. He was a big cheese. He was against the actions of the king and he made it known. And Margaret had even told him off for his folly. But he continued to insult King Henry by speaking against his break from the church and the dissolution of the monasteries. Away in Rome, Reginald was out of Henry's reach, and so the king took revenge on his family. In August 1538, Sir Geoffrey Pole, Reginald's brother, was arrested. Upon interrogation, the names of other family members came out. Their other brother, Henry, and their mother, Margaret, were arrested on charges of treason. For over two years, Margaret was held in the tower, she was noted to be visited by servants and clothing orders were made for the Countess, but she remained a captive and her lands were taken. Margaret was then linked to Catholicism and her son Reginald when a tunic-bearing Catholic symbols was found in a search of her house. It was likely planted, but Henry VIII ordered that she be executed and she was informed that she would be killed within the hour. Still, she denied all of the charges. The evidence against her wasn't exactly watertight. The ambassador to the Holy Roman Emperor, Chapuis, wrote an account of what happened. He said, At first, when the sentence of death was made to her, she found the thing very strange, not knowing of what crime she was accused, nor how she had been sentenced. And so the Countess of Salisbury, 67 years old, one of the last links to the Plantagenets and the House of York, was accused of treason, and Catholic plot, accusations she denied to the very end. The end for Margaret Pole came on the 27th of May in 1541. She was led out to a private execution. I mean, it wasn't that private. There were 150 people there to see her led out to the block. What they saw, they wouldn't forget. The main executioner that day had been out of town, so the job was given to a an inexperienced lad. Now he lifted up the axe, he brought it down and he missed Margaret's neck. He buried the blade right into her shoulder. Once he'd pulled it out, he hacked at her again and again, blow after blow. It took over 10 blows of his axe to sever her head from her body.
A later account thought that this story wasn't brutal enough. It had Margaret refusing the block, taunting her executioner, moving her head around deliberately and being chased. However it happened, Margaret's death was brutal, and for many at the time, and now, it was considered a huge miscarriage of justice. Margaret was buried at the chapel of St Peter ad Venicula, which is within the tower, and every year on the 28th of May, the Catholic Church celebrate her feast day. A poem said to be from Margaret was carved into the wall of her cell. For traitors on the block should die, I am no traitor, no not I. My faithfulness stands fast, and so towards the block I shall not go, nor make one step, and you shall see, Christ thy mercy, save thou me. Yes, yes, I would love to have a look at her bones, get them in the CT scanner, see where the blows really went, to see how it matches up to the story. But to be honest, I think she's been through enough. We should really leave her to rest in peace.